they got a volume on it? Uh, fortunately, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Ah, uh, they're doing it off the side. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to hide myself in so if you hear any swearing, stop from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see you next, thank you. How are you, mate? Bit breezy up there. No, sir. Bit breezy up there. Yeah. Hello everyone and welcome to TSLW semi-final action live from Abbotsfield Park in Claremont Hobart with Clarence and Glenorchy taking part in this contest here. My name is Ryan Rosendale and I am joined in the commentary box today by Hamish Spence in what should be a cracker of a final, Hamish. Yeah, definitely agree with you there, Ryan. Uh, both of these teams on the same number of wins and losses for the season. Uh, six wins and two losses and only 0.16% uh, separating them. That's why it's a Glenorchy home game today at Abbotsfield Park. But should be very interesting, of course, Clarence getting the chocolates uh, the two times they played during the regular season. But we don't reckon there's too much splitting these two teams today. Not too much at all, Hamish. And as we said, this game taking place at Abbotsfield Park today due to KG5 being unavailable for cricket Premier League action. So Glenorchy chose to host this game out at Abbotsfield Park, not too far away from their usual home deck at KG5. As we just see the Clarence team coming on to the field now. Obviously, the reigning premiers being led out there by their captain in Grace Mitchell. Obviously, the ruse, uh, as Hamish just spoke about, got the wood over Glenorchy all season in round two out of Richmond Oval. They defeated... Glenorchy 8 4 52 to Clarence, sorry, Clarence 8 4 52 to Glenorchy 2 8 20. And then in round 7 at KG5, it was another win to Clarence 6 4 40 to Glenorchy 4 4 28. So even though Glenorchy finished on top just as we spoke about on percentage, looks like the Ruse would probably go in his favourites today, Hamish. Uh, you, yeah, you'd reckon you'd say so, especially just kind of that mental edge. Of course, they got over them in the preliminary final last year as well, but. Glenorchy more than up to the challenge. Of course, they're the only team who've beaten Launceston this they season. Yep. A 
very tight top three where every team finished on six wins and two losses. And, of course, the Blues getting over their northern rivals, uh, North Launceston, to book their place in the grand final next week. Took the words out of my mouth, Hamish. That was right. So earlier today, I think it was a 9.30 start up at Windsor Park as we just see the coin toss here between the two captains. Looks like Glenorchy going to win it through Genevieve Sullivan. So she's going to kick to the club room end of Abbotsfield Park. And as we were just speaking about... Launceston with a win, their grand final bound now over North Launceston this morning. They won that game 9-9-63 to North Launceston, 3-2-20. So North Lonnie have been the informed team of the comp all year. They finished on top, but as we spoke about, Glenorchy, the only team to beat them twice this year. And if we cast our eyes back to the TSLW grand final last year, Hamish, Launceston went through the whole year undefeated, and then it was these girls on screen, the Clarence Ruse, that were able to knock them off in the grand final. And... If they can win today, they'll be looking for the same result next week going back-to-back -back premiers. Yeah, it's certainly. It was one of the biggest shots we've seen in Tassie footy for a while. And uh, you'd reckon Launceston would probably be hoping Clarence get up today, not only because they've beaten them the two times they play this season, but I reckon they could be out for revenge. But just hearing Clarence speaking during the week, they kind of acquainted this uh, uh, road for the finals this season to last year. They said they were the underdogs again coming through at third, even though... As we mentioned, these are a lot separating them between Glenorchy on the ladder. So certainly we'll have a lot of confidence knowing that they can uh, beat both the Blues and Magpies in uh, finals action as we saw last year. And obviously the Clarence side's full of uh, some... And sorry, the Glenorchy side, I should say, also are both full of some AFLW experience. Obviously uh, the Haynes twins have come across to Glenorchy this year from Lonnie. Obviously uh, Chloe's not playing today, she's injured. But Libby Haynes is out there for Glenorchy and also on the Clarence side of things we've got some AFLW experience with Nicole Bresnahan, uh, the North Melbourne Kangaroo, so she's one to watch out for. And we should also speak about the firepower in this game, Hamish. Obviously I think the top in the top five goal kickers in the comp, I think it's it's dominated by both Glenorchy and Clarence players. Obviously Sarah Skinner uh, won the goal kick award for the year, finishing on 18 goals. Um, and Jesse Williams from Clarence wasn't far behind, finishing on 17. Just into Limbrick from the Roos, obviously finished third on 12. So you've got a fair bit of firepower, so we should be in for a cracking contest up for today. Yeah, definitely agree with you there. And the one thing to keep in mind with Jesse Williams is uh, when they played, uh, it was both of their first games for the season back in round two. Uh, I think she managed to kick seven that day. Kicked so the bag, yep. yep uh, uh, Glenorchy will certainly be aware of that, but as you mentioned, Sarah Skinner's been in ripping form, kicked at least one guy in each game this season, including two bags of four, and it's pretty incredible because she also spends a lot of time through the middle, so to take out the leading goal kicking award in a league where you spend a lot of time on ball, it just shows what a classy player she, she is. She also spent a fair bit of the pre-season, I believe, uh, training with the Glenorchy men's side, so mm. that's obviously paid dividends for uh, this year, Sarah Skinner, and another one to watch for Glenorchy is Zoe Crawford. Uh, she's been named in the best seven times this season in the best six players for Glenorchy so she'll be one to watch obviously she came across from Brighton in the SFLW this year there she's number two in the midfield so no doubt she'll be one that the Roos players need to keep their eye on so we're just about to kick off proceedings here at Abbotsfield Park usually the home of the Claremont Magpies in the SFL but for this game today it's going to be the home of the Glenorchy Magpies in the TSLW as they look to book a spot in the grand final. But Clarence also looking to book a back-to-back -back spot in the grand final. And hopefully, if you're a Clarence supporter or player, you'll be looking to back-to-back -back flags. So here we go now. Umpire raises the ball. And we are away in the TSLW semi-final between Glenorchy and Clarence as the Roos look to get this one out through Nicole Bresnahan. As you can see, it's very wet underfoot. A lot of rain in Hobart the last couple of days. So no doubt this game will be full of a lot of ground ball and it'll be the uh, silky hands of a few players that will be looking to get their team forward on either end. So Libby Haynes there on the ground, as she always does. You see a few cars still coming in. Hopefully we get a good crowd out here at Abbotsfield Park today for this contest, which should be an absolute cracker. Whistle's being blown now, so we'll have a ball up. Yeah, certainly wouldn't be surprised if it's a bit of congested fair at the start. We see all the way there as the two rucks go at it. This time it's Clarence who get it down. Ball at the bottom of the pack. Glenorchy try and clear it. It looks like there's been a whistle blown and it's going uh, the ruse way. It might be a free there to Nicole Bresnan it is. So the North Melbourne Kangaroo AFLW. She's being 
Very lively early. Culbris in hand. Quality player in the TSLW. She kicks to Megan Harper. We look to bring this one inside 50, the first one of the day for the Roos. What a great kick off the boot there from Harper. That goes out of bounds on the full. And it's going to be Libby Haynes again to take this footy. So she obviously was cut by the North Melbourne Kangaroos at the end of, sorry, at the beginning of 2020. So she's crossed, came across from Launceston where she played it last season. And she's had a fairly good year in her first season at Glenorchy as Nicole Bresnan takes another grab. She kicks forward to the skipper in Mitchell. She can't take a mark. Glenorchy look to repel here. They've got numbers, though, do the ruse. As Jesse Williams is there, but it's Glenorchy going to bring this one out. Mitchell's there, though. She gives it off to number 29 in Nettie Garlow. She kicks forward. No mark taken now. As Holly Ryan looks to bring this one out of the defensive 50 for the Pies, but it's going to come straight back in for the ruse. Kick forward to Williams. She can't take a mark. Haynes is there for the Pies. She handballs off to number 32 in Kira Mass. This ball just wants to stay inside the forward 50 for the Roos. The Magpies doing everything they can to bring this footy out of the back 50, but looks like Barwick's there now, so is Crawford. The Roos get this one out. They do now. It's into the centre of the ground, but it's straight down the throne of the Clarence player. They take the mark. That's number four in Hannah Smith. So it's going to come back inside 50 now for Clarence. A great kick off the boot. No one there other than Williams. The ball drifts towards her. Good pressure there by Williams. Natalie Pierce had the ball. Couldn't get it to her boot though. Yes. Ball's on the ground now. Just trying to get the ball out now to Magpies. They do. So they're out now through Angela Clark. So Bresnahan's there again. She's going to be lively all day. Is that Gil and Carl Bresnahan? And that, I think that time she's been pinned holding the ball. So she's had a fair bit of it, Hamish, but that time the umpire disagreed and it was holding the ball. Yeah, definitely. And uh, finally for Glenorchy, they're able to kind of hold the ball up. It's been all in Clarence's 50. Uh, ball goes up. We see a free, but looks like it's heading Clarence's way again. So Glenorchy tried to break out, but all the ruse so far in this match. Two free kicks now to the, the ruse. None to the pies. As we said, it's going to be wet underfoot all day for these girls. So the clean skills are going to be key in this contest as the ruse come forward now that she gets around one. Kick towards goal to Williams is there. She can't take the mark, Jesse Williams. Good recovery, though, from her. Gets it off to Natalie Pierce is there for the Ruse. I think it might be taken high. It is. Grace Mitchell just a little overzealous there. So it's going to be a free kick to the Magpies through Mass. Deep inside the defensive 50 for Glenorchy. So she's going to bring this one directly up the line. Dangerous kick, though. Bresnahan's there. No one on her. She's going to look for goal now, Nicole Bresnahan. It's not great off the boot, though. Haynes is there. It's going to trickle out of bounds. It is. No. Stays in play. Good work there from Glenorchy. Crawford's there now. Mitchell's on her tail. Good tackle by Mitchell. A lot of players around this football. It's going to be hot all day as Sarah Skinner's there, one of the stars of the TSLW. Gives it off now to number 30 in Amy Prochnick. I think she might have kicked the goal she has. So first one of the day on the board for the Ruse, and it's through Amy Propochnik. Well, you'd probably say in the end it was reward for effort. It had been bubbling inside their Ford 50 for practic practically the whole term. Uh, to Clarence's uh, credit, they were defending really doggedly, just being able to cut off the ball, but it's just that repeat surges forward and probably representative of what we'll see today. Just lo lots of hurried kicks inside Ford 50, and it finally uh, paid off for the Ruse. Yeah, you're spot on there, Hamish. No doubt uh, the Clarence coach in Andrew Smith will be incredibly happy with the forward group pressure there. Obviously the ball was coming in and out, but eventually the Roos were able to get one on the board. And it's uh, a six-point lead now to Clarence as we're five minutes gone in the first quarter. Ball back in the middle now. Kick off the boot there from Georgia Allome. She gets that one forward, looking for Amy Edmund. Ball triples inside 50 now. Jesse Williams is dangerous inside 50. Jesse Williams goes to the square. Good defence there, though, through Clifton. She's going to have some help here now, but it's two on two. I think oh. that might have gone through for a goal. Terrific play off the deck by the Ruse. And it's a goal to the Ruse. Uh, Natalie Pierce Natalie just Pierce. a sock off the ground. Uh, kind of in that pool we have at the top of the goal square there. And uh, uh, this is looking like a really ominous start for Clarence now. I don't even think it's entered uh, Glenorchy's inside 50 no. yet. It's just been all Clarence. And uh, two goals early in the game. Uh, 
the Magpies certainly need to counter soon. Uh, the ball's uh, definitely been played in the forward half of Clarence's ground. It hasn't, uh, I don't think it's crossed the centre line for Glenorchy so far. So that's a worry sign there for the Glenorchy coach in Dean Webster. No doubt he'll be urging his girls to uh, move that ball forward quickly because they're going to need to put some scoreboard pressure back on Clarence in this game. The ball's back in the centre now as Crawford's there. Sorry, that's not Crawford. That is Gemma Webster, the other blonde-haired midfielder for Glenorchy. So it's going to be a free kick now, though, to the Roos as they drive this one forward. Player slips over was Bresnahan. She's back on her feet now, though, as it comes forward now to Procknick. The girl to kick the first goal. Williams is there off the deck. Jesse Williams just goes to the right of screen. So the first point of the day is a Clarence behind, and it's 2-1, 13 now to Glenorchy. Yet to score, as we're going to bring this back into play now. So, 2-1, 13, the Roos hold the lead over Glenorchy. So, ball comes back out. Doesn't look great off the boot. Contest forms, though. Sullivan's there for the pie. She's taken without it. It's going to be a free kick. Whistle's blown. So, she's a, a stalwart of this club is Sullivan for the pies. So, she kicks inside the line, but... Clarence get it through Limbrick, but she's tackled there by a Magpie player and it's holding the ball. So the ball comes as far as it has all game so far for the Magpies and it's through number 37 in Clark. She's going to bring in forward first inside 50 of the day, I think, for the Magpies, but it's a Clarence ball and it's going to be through Oates to bring this one back out. Common scoreboard side of the ground to Williams. She's hot off her tail is Jessie Williams. She brings this one forward. Edmonds there for the Roos. Gives it back to Williams. Good bit of play there by Jessie Williams. She's a talented player. Obviously played a fair bit of soccer in Canberra. She doesn't like that decision though from the umpire. It's going to be a free kick to Haynes. So all the lively players for both sides have had a fair bit of the ball early. One of those is Crawford. She immediately plays on Zoe Crawford. Brings this one up the line. It's taken there though by Rachel Archer in front of number 45 in forward. She appeals for a free kick. I think it is going to be a free kick. So she's going to bring it inside 50 now for the Pies. Pack form. Skinner's there. She can't take the mark. Over the back though is Gemma Webster. Gemma Webster, first shot on goal for the day for Glenorchy. And it's out of bounds on the full. I would have liked that goal there, Hamish. Yeah, definitely. But I guess the positive thing is even though it didn't even result in the score, it was just some really positive play, like the want to actually play on quickly and get it inside there. It's what we've been seeing from Clarence, a lot of chaos ball, and in these wet conditions, it can cause a lot of damage. So dangerous kick there from the Roos. It goes over Bresnahan's head. It's gone out to number 22 in Brianna Barwick. Kick on goal from Barwick, almost there, but Archer playing the goalkeeper role for the Roos. She takes a mark in the goal square. She's going to bring this one back out to the scoreboard side of Abbotsfield Park. Goes out. She's looking for Williams. She's got a bit of space, Jessie Williams. She's talented. Gets around Skinner. She brings this one up the line to number 30 in Procknick, who's been lively early. Kick the first goal of the day. She brings it forward to the skipper in Grace Mitchell. So Mitchell looks to centre this ball inside 50. Great kick there and an even better mark for the Roos to number 22 in Alomes. So she handballs off now. It's a kick on goal for the Roos. I don't think it's going to trouble the goal umpire. It's not. That one's out of bounds. So we're going to have a boundary throw in. It was a nice bit of play there through Alomes and Mitchell Hamish. And it almost looked like they were going to have a shot on goal, but probably Alomes didn't have the distance in her own mind. Yeah, definitely. But to transition it from one end of the ground to the other, just showing how good they've been. And a boundary throwing a great result as the two rucks go at it. Ball goes to the ground level. Williams again. Uh, she's been trying to soccer it all day. She goes in for tackle. Uh, Clarence appeal, but none giving. And another ball up. But you'd have to say top of the goal square. This is a real danger area for Benorki. Massive danger area for the Pies. So the Roos are going to look for their third here. Good numbers there, though, for the Pies. They worked that one well. Good attempt there at a mark through Clark. She can't take it, though. It's a ground ball. As we said, it's probably going to be a ground ball majority of this game. Comes out to Oates for Clarence. Haynes is there, though, for the pie. She started well in the defensive 50. Kick now for the Roos. I think it's gone out on the floor. And they've had probably four or five shots early in this contest, Clarence, but three or four have gone out. I think that one might have been touched off the boot. So it's going to be a boundary throw-in now. 
Yeah, another really positive result, just locking it inside their Ford 50. But as you said, Ryan, probably looking to maybe get some more reward for effort. So, ball comes back in now. Whistle's blown, though. I think it's going to be another throw, and it is. So, the wind just caught that footy there mid-air. So, as we said, the weather's been pretty wet and windy all week in Hobart. So, I think there's a bit of rain forecast later today. So, hopefully for the girls, it stays off for them. But could trouble them at some point during this contest. A few players go down there. Mitchell's one of them, but the ball's come out now. Barwick's there for Glenorchy. She handballs this one out to Haynes. Haynes gets around one. Almost gets around the second, but gets her kick off. So pack forms. Skinner's there for the Pies. She gets out to Crawford. Nice bit of footwork there by Crawford. Brings this one forward, but it's all Clarence in the defensive back half through Borrington. So she kicks forward. Skinner's there, though. She's collected a fair bit of ball in the last couple of minutes, Sarah Skinner. We know how talented she is, but it's come straight down the throat of Hannah Smith. As we said, this ball's just stayed in the forward half for Clarence all game. Bar a few, I think it was two inside 50s in the last mm. few minutes for Glenorchy. So they're going to look to drive forward again here to Pies. A bit of work there from Archer. She's a solid defender in this side. Obviously played in that flag last year for the Roos. Ball comes forward now. Mark's been taken, though. Good mark in the end by Skinner. She plays on. Drives this one forward now. Back forms. It's all Clarence over. Over the back, it's number 45 in forward. She gives it off the boot. I don't think anyone's down there, so it's going to be a ground ball. Two on one here. Good bit of work there by Bresnahan. Good pressure, though, by the, by the Pies. Comes out now to Barwick. She's tackled, though. Gives the handball back to forward. Back to forward, and she's missed around the corner off the boot. So, promising signs there for the Pies, but it's only one behind. So, they trail this game now 2 1, 13 to 0 1 1. And we are just about to tick into 13 minutes in this first quarter. Yeah, definitely red time. The Norky need a goal, but being really impressed with how Clarence have defended, just seemed to cut off the ball so much and almost brought down the mark there. Bresnahan is able to get it out, though, moves the ball forward. William, she's been lively early, but Glenorchy able to take a contest. But it's a Glenorchy free, so this gives them a good opportunity to launch inside 50 late in the term. It is. So they're going to launch now, as Hamish just said. They launch forward. Crawford's there. Can't take the mark, though. Ball comes off the boot. Mark's been taken. They'll travel the distance, says the umpire. So Mark's been taken there by Laura Negri. She drives deep inside 50. No one can take a mark. Ford was there. She's been lively when the ball's come forward. Whistle's blown. I think it might be a high tackle. So I think it might be a free kick to the Ruse. It is. So it's going to be a free kick there to Bronte Scott. So she's going to kick up the line, but it's not taken there by Kenny. She's set upon by two magpies. So it might have been high there. I think it is. Yep. Archer's given away a free kick there. So, could be a shot on goal here, but they elect to drive this one forward the Pies. Pack forms. Skinner's there. Can't take the mark. Good bit of work there by Williams. Sorry, Webster. So, I think it might have gone through there for the Pies. It has. So, it might be a goal there to... It's getting way for confirmation. It's a goal. They like it, so the Pies get there first. A bit of confusion there from everyone, including us, Hamish, but that uh, gives them a sniff going into quarter time. So 2-1-13 now to 1-1-7, and it was a good bit of play, as we saw at the other end from Clarence. If you can keep that ball inside your forward 50 and apply pressure, there's a good chance you'll be able to put a bit of score pressure on and it'll result in a goal. Yeah, I'll we'll just have to figure out who the player was. But we've seen a lot of uh, soccer kicks all day. That's a quarter time siren sound. So it's very timely, but it was a funny play. I think Clarence were looking to soccer it out of their 50 as they've done all day, but got cut off and soccered right through the goal for Glenorchy. So it was very timely because it's just made it a one kick difference at quarter time. So Clarence currently in the lead 2 1 13 to Glenorchy with that red time goal. 117. There's no doubt that goal there just in the dying stage of that first quarter will be pleasing for Dean Webster after the Ruse control the majority of the contest in the opening probably eight to ten minutes. But as we said, both these sides have had a fairly good year as we see on the replay now. We'll try and get a look at who kicked that goal. I think it might have been Webster. 
It was. So, terrific goal there from... It's the... So- so it's very interfered. And very, but, yeah, not sure who kicks. So it looked like Webster, but it might have been forward on the on the rebound out. So we'll give that one to Tiana forward. So it was a good bit of play there by Webster to keep that ball forward. But so forwards kicked a goal for the Pies. So as we see there at quarter time, it is 2-1-13 to 1-1-7. We'll take a quick break here at Abbotsville Park and we'll be back with you for the second quarter in just a minute. Hello and welcome back to Abbotsfield Park in Claremont for this TSLW semi-final clash between Clarence and Glenorchy. It was a uh, frenetic and hot first quarter here at Abbotsfield Park as we just see. We were a bit unsure before we went to break who kicked this goal and obviously with our high-tech TSL replay here, we can see that it's come off the knee there 
of Elise Barwick. So we thought it might have been forward as she was the second closest to that ball, but it was actually the knee of Elise Barwick. So terrific bit of play there by the Magpies, and it uh, gave them the, obviously, Clarence were 2 one 13 to 0 one one up at that stage. So it gave them just a six-point deficit at the first break, which would have been very pleasing for Coach Dean Webster. So as we said before we uh, went to the quarter-time break, it was hot early from the Roos inside 50. They dominated the majority of the play for the opening eight to ten minutes. And then Glenorchy threw a lot of hard work in the defensive half from uh, Libby Haynes. She was, she was lively early. Uh, Sarah Skinner was good in the first quarter. They were able to uh, move the ball inside 50 and have a few shots on goal, and they were able to register their first one deep inside uh, the last minute of the first quarter. So as we see now, we're going to resume play in the second quarter as the Ruck, Ruck women sorry, go up, I should say. So ball comes out now to Bresnahan for the Rue. She kicks forward. Ball trickles inside 50. Jessie Williams is there. She's got no one on her. Jessie Williams, she's going to go for goal. She just misses Jessie Williams. As we said pre-game, she's lively early, kicked a bag uh, earlier in the year when these two sides played, and it looked like that was a open slather for Jessie Williams there, Hamish. Yeah, probably could have taken a few more seconds there, but she's been really lively early, definitely one to worry about for the Roos as Bresnan tries to break the tackle, and yeah, she probably was pinned there, uh, but she's been very lively as well. But She has, Nicole Bresnan, obviously a very talented footballer on the uh, currently on the AFLW list with the North Melbourne Kangaroos. She's been lively, but she was tackled there and pinned with holding the ball. So kick out now to Skinner, but she's got Clarence Roos on her everywhere as this ball comes out now to number 29 in Garlo. It's gone straight down the throat of a Gamorki defender. So just in front of us here in the commentary position, Clarence is going to look to drive this one back inside 50. Is Skinner there? Looks to smother, but she can't. And the ball's gone down the throat of number 25 in Perry King, who's a talented young footballer. Applied a junior trade up at New Norfolk, I believe. So the ball's gone forward now. Looks like Barwick tried to get away with one there with the umpire, but it's going to be a free kick to Clarence through number 17 in Bor Borrington. So she kicks into the centre of the ground now, looking for Williams. She can't take it, as we see there. When the ball hits the deck, there's a lot of water coming up from the surface from all the rain this week. Present hands there. She can't take it. So it was number 30 in Procknick who kicked the first goal of the day. So Crawford with the tackle there. She's been hot on the tail of Nicole Bresnahan when the ball's in that forward 50 and through the centre. So Crawford now brings it out to Webster. So Webster and Crawford have been lively in the centre of the ground for the Magpies. It's a bit hard to tell those two women apart, Hamish, both being uh, blonde-haired and one wearing number two and one wearing number three. Yeah, definitely. And it feels like the ball's being played a lot here on this win. That's the two rucks go at it. Ball at the bottom of the pack, but the Norky tackle it hard and able to clear it from there. Goes up the ground. Can they get a mark as we see that water just spill off the ball once again? But Clarence, as they've done all day, mopped up really well, but it looks like it's going to go straight to Barwickle. Massive hit Archer there. And yeah, very uh, fair free to say there, but maybe after that kind of lucky go at the end of the quarter time, Archer just thought I'll make you uh, earn that mark right there. Yeah, so free kick here to Barwick against Archer for the Roos. Ball inside 50 now looking for forward. She can't take the mark, but good recovery there by forward. She had a lot of Roos around her. She's still at the fall of this ball. She's got it now, but it slips out of her hands. We said that ball's going to be hot and wet all day due to that uh, hot because of the uh, complexity of this contest being a semi-final and wet because of the weather all week. So there's no doubt that if you can get your hands on the ball inside 50 and get a quick kick away, it might just go your way as Crawford takes that ruck tap now, but it goes straight to Archer. She looks for Garlow, but it's cut off there by Barwick. A bit of play here from Barwick. She's going to look for a second, but she centres it. She does the team thing. But it's going to be a mark here to number 17 in Warrington, and she's kicked this to the scoreboard side of Abbotsfield Park. Bit of ground ball here from the Roos. Another kick off the ground there from the Magpies. It's worked out well there for the Magpies. Going out to Shaw, but she's kicked that one out on the fall, and as we've seen in the first quarter, and with that kick there, there's been a few quick kicks towards goal that have uh, drifted out of bounds on the fall. Yeah, we definitely have. Uh, it seems like the Norky have come out a lot more aggressive this term. Uh, you'd reckon that red time goal has done wonders for them. It's an absolute roost of a kick. It almost falls there for 
Holmans, but she wasn't able to bring it down. Uh, Clarence trying to surge it forward, but it's being cut off, and it gives Glenorchy another chance to attack inside forward 50. Uh, Crawford almost brings down the mark there, but he's tackled by Bresnahan. Yep, and Pinky. you can yep. always tell the umpire he was uh, ready to throw the uh, signal. I think it's going to be 52, it is. Yep. Tough call there on Zoe Crawford. Obviously, we've seen that a lot at the uh, at the top level in the AFL this year. If you've got the footy on the ground, you don't really make a genuine attempt. You're uh, likely to be pinned. So it's a uh, new interpretation around the country in football, but. Obviously, Zoe Crawford was a bit annoyed by that decision and she gave oh. away 50 as Maggie Sutcliffe has taken an absolute screamer in the defensive 50. That's a terrific mark from Sutcliffe. So the kick isn't as great as the mark was, but Crawford's there. She brings this one back in through help from a teammate. So ball goes forward now. Jessie Williams is there, as we know, she's lively. Look to get that one off the ground. She's got Pies all around to Jesse Williams. She does well there. Brings it back out now. Great defensive work here from Glenorchy. The Roos, though, they're lively when they when they go forward. They have been all game. So just to go back on that mark, there was a huge grab from uh, from Sutcliffe Hamish. Yeah, if we see a better mark than that today, especially in the wet, uh, I will be uh, have some very good feeling, but. Uh, Clarence uh, once again surging inside 50 trying to get the ball out. It's been a congested contest all day. Almost gets a kick there. Clarence Glenorchy appeal for the free, sorry, and they end up getting it. It was a great tackle in the end. It was a great tackle there from Sullivan. She, she gives off to Sutcliffe, the lady who took that terrific grab a minute ago. Good result there from Glenorchy, but I think it might be free kick it is. So obviously it's going to be a free kick now to to Clarence. So just in front of the scoreboard there as we see scoreline reads 2-2-14 Glenorchy, sorry Clarence to 1-1-7 Glenorchy. So the Roos holding the ledger at this point of this semi-final clash. So ground ball there, Barwick's there for Glenorchy. Handball out by the Magpies. Oates was there, she couldn't take clean possession. Comes out now to Molly Mitchell. She gets a quick kick off but it's going to go straight down the throat in Nicole Bresnahan. Hard tackle there, but she didn't like it. Nicole Bresnan gave it a bit afterwards, so the whistle's being blown, and it's going to be a free kick there to Ford. It was a uh, hard tackle there on uh, Bresnan. She didn't like it, Nicole, so it's going to be a free kick now to Ford. Been a lot going on there, like uh, Bresnan's been holding the pole a few times, then she got one back herself. She's, but a, she's a player, Hamish, that there's no doubt would cop a fair bit of attention from opposition teams mm. week in and week out, so there's no doubt she... Uh, Cops, she gets a fair bit of the ball, but in, in saying that, she uh, cops a fair bit of attention from opposition players. As the ball went inside 50 there for the Roos, but it's come back out now, and Clifton's given that handball off to a teammate. It's come inside 50 now for the Pies, but it's come back out, and the Roos got it through Procknick. So she's going to drive this forward, but set up well behind the ball here are the Magpies through Sullivan. She gives off now. We had more time there, the Glenorchy defender, to get a kick away, but it's worked out well. It's come inside 50 for the Pies. Crawford's there, good pressure from her. Good bit of pressure there too from a teammate. As it's a good defensive play here from the Roos. Kick off the ground now. It's brought the ball back outside 50 for Clarence. This was being blown. I think it might be a high tackle it is. So Bresnahan. She's got the ball on the string today, Nicole Brisenhan. She's uh, had a fair bit of footy in the opening parts of this contest. She brings four looking for Williams. She's got Magpies all around her, and she's down. She doesn't look good. It might be a knee there to Williams. We'll keep an eye on that one. She's holding that knee in a fair bit of pain. As Barwick's got it now. Look for a teammate there in Clark. I think the whistle's blown. I think it might could be a 50-metre penalty. It is. So, not happy about it, the Clarence bench. So, ball's gone to number 14 in Molly Mitchell. So, she's going to look to get this one inside 50 for her side. I think for the second goal of the game. Should have been downfield there. You hear that from the bench. I think there was a bump after the play there. Probably a downfield that the umpire missed. Comes out now, though, through Megan Harper. So, Magpies have it now again. Mitchell, she kicks inside 50. King's there, so is Skinner. Skinner's there, King's there. 
high tackle applied, I think it is. So Perry King is going to have a kick. Distance might trouble her here, but she's a talented footballer. It is, so she's going to bring this one deep for the Magpies. Woman flies there in Clark. She can't take a mark, though. It's come over the back for the Ruse. Harper, she's been involved in the last two. Kind of rebounds out of defensive 50. Really stepping up, but that isn't a great kick out. And it goes straight to Barwick, who has a chance to be Lenorki's second goal kicker today and just uh, make it a couple of points of difference. So this will probably be a uh, fair bit of reward for effort for the Pies if Barwick can kick it, but she's elected to give a kick off. Great oh. shoe there from Barwick, and it's gone straight down the throat of Molly Mitchell. So... Good decision there from Barwick. She knew she didn't have the distance and uh, she's given it to a teammate in Mitchell who should no doubt be able to kick a goal from here. Another player who's been lively this quarter. He had a great contest where she bumped her defender off her and if she can get a goal and especially the first of this quarter would be a great reward for Benorki. So Molly Mitchell now comes in looking for the pie second of the game. She brings the angle wide around. It's gone straight through the middle for Molly Mitchell. So that's the second one for the pies. And they now trail this contest by the solitary point. It's Clarence 2-2-14. To Lenorki, 2-1-13 with 10 minutes, 10 and a half minutes gone in the second quarter. Well, I think it would be fair to say it's been a pretty even quarter so far. The ball's kind of been rebounding out of uh, each team's respective defensive 50s, but neither side really able to get a clean mark except until that last play. It was kind of a great link-up play between Barwick uh, cutting the ball off from half and then being able to spot up Mitchell. And now just a point of difference and... Uh, haven't had much chance to touch on it, but we'll keep an eye on Jesse Williams to see if that knee's going to trouble her throughout the day. Yeah, spot on Hamish. We saw her go down that uh, play prior to that goal with a knee in the wet, so we'll keep an eye on her as Webster's got it now. She kicks four, but it's straight down the throat of a Clarence defender. So we knew this contest would be tight early, and that's exactly what we've got in this TSLW semi final so far. The winner of this game will go ahead to next week's grand final against Launceston. So Crawford's got it now for the Pies. So a bit of time to Zoe Crawford. She kicks inside 50 now. Looking for Molly Mitchell. Just kicked that goal, Mitchell. Good play there from both Archer and Mitchell. Ball's gone over the line though. So as we spoke about, there was a uh, TSLW semi-final early, early today, Hamish, and Lonnie got the win in that one over North Launceston. So whoever wins this game has got a uh, tough task against Launceston next week. Yeah, well, it's probably been a free team race all season and uh, very close. They're all finished with six wins and two losses, but a big challenge for either of these two sides to overcome today as we enter red time in this court and we've only one goal kick, you dare say there wouldn't be too much time left on the clock. Obviously, short quarters here in this COVID hit TSL season. So, as Hamish just spoke about, we're in the red time now in this game and there's no doubt Gorky will be pretty happy with this second quarter they've produced after it. Clarence got off to a really hot start in that first quarter but weren't able to apply a lot of scoreboard pressure, only getting the two majors on the board. So Bar has got it now for the Pies. Smothered there, though, by the Ruse. Good play there from Clarence. Barwick applies a bit of pressure there on Bresnahan. Whenever she gets the ball, Nicole Bresnahan, there's a Glorky player right on her tail. So no doubt that would have been spoken about during the week for the Pies that she's a player that collects a lot of footy and she's damaging when she, when she gets it. So... She's uh, had a fair bit today, but whenever she gets it, it's uh, always a player right behind her as Crawford goes up in the ruck. Ball's gone out of bounds again. So, as we spoke about, there's not long to go in this contest now. And we're in the one-point ball game. So, if you're a Glenorchy supporter watching, a lot, watching along or you're at the ground, you'd be super happy with the second quarter that your girls have produced in this game. As the ball goes back in. Throw goes over the ruck head at that time. So kick inside 50 now off the ground. Garlow's there though for Glenork for Clarence. Comes out now. Sullivan's got the footy now. Kick inside 50 from the ruck woman. Forwards there. She gives it off to Skinner. Talented player Sarah Skinner. She's hot on her tail though are the Clarence defenders. Well, comes out now to number 22 in Barwick. She's been caught holding the ball from Oates. So she's going to get a kick here just on the pain of the defensive 50 for Clarence. She kicks inside looking for number 31 in Charlotte Kenny. She can't take the mark. Comes out now to a few ruse. They fight over that ball to the ruse. Comes out now through Bresnahan. Barwick's hot on her tail though. Kick out now for Clarence. Bit of room now here for Clarence to work through Garlow. 
Oh, that's come from everywhere. Great bit of play here from the Milwaukee defenders. Saw that ball just stop in the centre of the ground there. The rain underfoot from all the wet weather that we've received here in Hobart this week. Garlow kicks out just here in front of us at the commentary position. Sullivan's there. She's got Ruse all around her. Came from nowhere, but I think it's going to be a free kick for a high tackle. It is, so... Edmund came from absolutely nowhere there, Hamish, but it's a uh, free kick now to the Pisers. I think it's going to be another free kick here, which was blown. Yeah. So, it's no Mitchell Smart, but it looks like the umpire's uh, going to let her take a kick, not pay advantage. And she's been really lively this quarter. And the last thing the Roos would want is to concede a goal late in this quarter and allow other uh, Pies to get up. She has, so they conceded a late goal in the first quarter, Clarence, so they'll be looking not to do that again here as the ball goes forward through Mitchell. Pack forms over the back, no one takes a mark as the siren goes to end the second quarter of this TSLW semi-final clash. And we have got a ripping game with a one-point lead here to Clarence, 2-2-14 to 2-1-13, Hamish Spence. Yeah, it's been a very tight contest so far, not only on the scoreboard, but just around the ground, very congested up. Uh, I'd say that second quarter apart from the scoreboard of course Glenorchy getting the lone goal was fairly even but it was an improved effort from the Magpies. I thought they just seemed to match Clarence's intensity and especially uh, as you mentioned several times with Bresnahan and uh, Williams uh, before she uh, went down with that knee. We'll have to keep an eye on that. It just felt like whenever one of the Roos star players was near the contest or had the ball they would just swarm like a uh, pack of mac pies, which I guess is pretty apropos. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that uh, Coach Dean Webster will be incredibly happy with the effort of his side in that second quarter. It's probably a, a tale of two quarters in that half. Hamish, obviously, the first quarter was probably dominated by the Roos in the opening eight to ten minutes before Glenorchy were able to sneak that one late through Elise Barwick. Um, and then in that second quarter, it was the Pies who really controlled the game. So potentially we could be seeing uh, the scoreboard end be the non uh, the non change room end at Abbotsfield Park. So we'll keep an eye on that in the second half. But as we spoke about, uh, Jesse Williams went down in that quarter. Looked like she might have hurt her knee with a with a wet ground underfoot. So it could it could be a minor injury, or it could be a major one. We're not too sure at this point of the game. We'll keep an eye on that one for you. So just repeating the scores here at Abbotsfield Park at half time. It is Clarence 2-2-14, leading Glenorchy by the solitary point 2-1-13. The goal kickers for each side. Uh, Amy Procknick with one for Clarence along with Natalie Pearce and the solitary goal kickers for the Pies are Elise Barwick and Molly Mitchell. We will take a quick break here at, at Abbots Hill Park and we'll bring the second half to you in just a bit.
Hello and welcome back to Abbotsfield Park in Claremont for this TSLW semi-final clash between Clarence and Glenorchy. It's half time here in this do or die clash for both sides with, Glen with Clarence currently holding a one point lead over Glenorchy 2-2-14 to 2-1-13. My name is Ryan Rosendale and I'm joined today by Hamish Spence and Hamish as we spoke about before the half time break it was uh, probably a game a sorry a half of two quarters where Clarence controlled the majority of the first quarter and then it was Glenorchy that were able to control the majority of the second. Yeah, I think you've definitely, you're definitely right there, Ryan. Uh, as we saw, Clarence got off to a really good start. I think their two goals were in the first five or six minutes and it was looking pretty ominous for Glenorchy, but it's been fairly even since then and uh, a bit of luck for the Pies at the end of the first quarter with that uh, miraculous goal from Barwick and we had to go to the replay yep. a few times to see that. But in that second quarter, it was a fairly even contest, but Probably the major difference was the fact that the Norky were able to get the lone goal that quarter through Molly Mitchell, which sees this game just one point the difference at half time. Yeah, we knew it was going to be a uh, tight contest throughout this game as both sides, as we said, are only uh, split on the ladder by percentage, and it's not much percentage at all, it's uh, 16%. So both sides have been very good all year in this TSLW season. Uh, and as we spoke about throughout that first half, it was another TSLW semi-final clash this morning up at Windsor Park. It was an early start for the Launceston sides as Launceston, who finished top of the ladder, were able to walk away victors in that game, 9-9-63 to North Launceston, 3-2-20. So North Lonnie have booked back-to-back -back TSLW grand final spots. And if you're a Clarence supporter, you'd be hoping the same as Clarence are currently the reigning premiers. But as we said... Uh, Lonnie have uh, been the informed team all year, but Glenorchy have been uh, the only side that have beaten them this year and they've done that twice. Yeah, it's going to make for a very interesting uh, grand final, whoever gets for us. We've noted uh, it's a fairly even like top three on the ladder, of yep. course. Uh, Glenorchy, as you mentioned, beat Launceston each time they play. Uh, Clarence have beaten Glenorchy each time they play this season, so we'll see if that can change. And of course, uh, Launceston have the wood over the ruse, so very even I think they called it a parity circle I guess yeah. triangle in this uh, case but Launceston are going to be very ominous uh, for whichever team gets up today in this match and of course probably the big story out of that game was uh, uh, Brooke Brown of course yeah. drafted to the North Melbourne uh, AFLW Kangaroos only a few days ago and kicked five first half goals so that's a fair way to kind of celebrate uh, getting drafted into the AFLW. It's the, uh, a great week for her and obviously if she, her team can go on next week and win the flag it'll be a, a great fortnight for her and uh, as we look ahead uh, to later today Hamish if you're a TSL fan you're in for a treat because in the men's side of things we've got two cracking contests later this afternoon with both games uh, being up north with North Launceston hosting Clarence at Utah's Stadium in a uh, first versus fourth battle while over at Windsor Park just across the river in Launceston it'll be the home side Launceston hosting Lauderdale in the other semi-final so the winners of both those games will progress straight through to the grand final next week obviously in this COVID hit season it's a shorter uh, TSL final series so whatever game you're watching hopefully uh, you're going to watch every game this on this Saturday but Whatever game you choose to watch, Hamish, there's no doubt you're in for a cracker of a day if you're a TSL supporter. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure a few Clarence fans are hoping to see both of their teams get through to the grand final next week on the stream. But it's been a fantastic season. Uh, it's been tight through all the leagues, and it looks like we're set for a really thrilling second half here. So just about to get underway here at Abbotsfield Park for the second half of this TSLW semi-final clash between Clarence and Lenorchy. As the umpire raises the ball and blows his whistle for the beginning of the second half and we are underway as that ball goes up in the air. Good ruck work there from both ruck women. The ball comes out now. It is Pierce there for the Ruse. She gives it off to Megan Harper who really just snatched it out of her teammates' hands. So it comes forward now to Amy Edmund. Pressure now though from the Pies. Webster's got it. She kicks forward. Looking for forward, who's been lively down forward all day for the Magpies. Give it tongue twister that one forward, forward. So, ball inside 50 now for the Magpies as Barwick's there. Garlow's there though for the Roos. As we've seen all game, whenever that ball's on the deck, a lot of players are all on top of that footy. So, if you can get clean skills out of the pack, it's going to go a long way to giving your side a bit of ascendancy in this game. Bresnan kicks out of the defensive 50 now. She's looking for Natalie Pierce. 
as we've spoken about a lot on the call, Hamish, you can see as the girls put the boots into the ground, it's uh, wet underfoot from all the rain that we've received in Hobart the last few days. Yeah, well, uh, you never uh, doubt that AFL is a winter sport and it's certainly been quite wet here today. It's almost like they're in a swimming pool. It's Glenorchy load the ball inside 50. Uh, neither team uh, can pull down a mark. It looks like the ball's at the bottom of the contest. Umpire's going to call for a ball up and uh, one thing we'll keep an eye on in this second half is if Jesse Williams is out there, yep. hasn't gone to uh, Clarence's Ford 50 where you'd expect her to be but could be a big loss for the Roos going forward. Yeah, obviously she's uh, been lively all year, she's kicked 17 goals and run, ran second in the uh, comp goal kicking next to the Glenorchy player in Sarah Skinner who kicked 18 so Jesse Williams went down in that third, in that second quarter with a we think is a knee injury so we'll keep an eye on that to see if she is up forward for the Rouge in the second half and I think she is there she's on screen so must have only been a minor niggle for Jesse Williams she's back out there which is a great sign for Clarence as that ball's gone out near the line a bit of a throw there and the umpire's called it so it was a good attempt there of Enman, but she's been pinged for a throw, so it's going to be a free kick now to Laura Negri for Glenorchy. Played a fair bit of footy in Geelong where she's studying, so she's come across back home, she's applying her trade for Glenorchy this season. So it's come out now to Zoe Crawford, former Brighton skipper. She's kicked this one inside 50. Ball there, plays around at Barwick's there for the Pies. Going to come out though through Oates for Clarence. Kick away the teammates. Come out now. Sponty Scott's got it. Harwick's there though. Oh, great hit there from both players. Great attack on the ball, I should say. Both players are down. We'll keep an eye on that one. Terrific contest there from both players. Barwick saw. She's really feeling the effects of that clash, and you love to see that. Just two players going hard at the ball, Hamish. Yeah, definitely. As Bresnahan uh, takes a mark and just surges forward, and it looks like it's in a perfect spot for Grace Mitchell. He's able to mark, sends the ball forward, and it just sits right up there uh, for her teammate. So, kick now. Not a great kick to Nicole Bresnahan. She would have liked that one in the air, so she could have taken a mark and had a shot on goal. So, it's come back out now. For Glenorchy, forwards got it. She's going to look to drive this one inside 50 for the Pies. Goes over the head of Holly Ryan. Good recovery though from Ryan. So Skinner's there. We know how good of a player she is. Good tackle there from Skinner. She's been pinged though for a hole. Tough call there for Skinner. I think we see the umpire there direct to her as she took the Clarence defender to ground. So it's going to be a free kick here, and Oates is going to have the footy. She brings to the commentary side of Abbotsfield Park looking for Garlo. She can't take the mark. Good tackle there from Clark. Crawford's got it now. Handball to herself, really, but player in Sutcliffe comes to give support. Negri's there, though. She drives forward, looking for Molly Mitchell, the goal scorer from the second quarter. Kick the only goal that quarter did Mitchell. Ball goes forward now. Can't take the mark, Edmund. Players just look to see who's going to pick this ball up. As we said, whenever the ball's on the deck, a lot of players get around the footy so they can get clean skills out. Drive it forward for your side. It's going to be key to winning this game. As we see Barwick coming off the ground there after that hit. She's really feeling the effects of that contest on the far side of the ground. So Garlow now has got the footy. He's going to drive this directly up the line now for the Roos. Good attempt over the back there from Alones. She can't take the mark though. Crawford's got it. She's been around the footy all game. Has Zoe Crawford throw there though for the Roos. So we hear the coach there, Dean Webster, telling Sarah Skinner to go on the ball. So they want one of their best players in the thick of the action. So she's probably played the majority of the season on the ball. So when she rests forward... She's dangerous, but it's a good coaching now move from Dean Webster to shift her into the middle in the, what they say, Hamish, is the premiership quarter. Yeah, definitely. I mean, she's kicked 18 goals as the leading goal kicker this season, but uh, definitely uh, probably the main objective is to get the ball through the middle and get it forward, which Clarence are trying to do now. They win the ruck tap, but none of their players on the ground are able to get the ball. As we've seen all day, the ball's just bubbling around in that kind of cauldron of um, water on the ground at the moment. Uh, Looks like we're heading for another ball up and some bad news for Glenorchy potentially with Barwick going off the ground. Yeah, it was a massive hit there over on the far side of the ground and Barwick came off second best, but no doubt Dean Webster, the coach of Glenorchy, would love the attack of 
one of his players there. She's been good today at Barwick, so hopefully for the Pies, she can get back out in this game at some point in this third quarter or come back on in the last. As the ball goes up now, Crawford and Alomes go up. Ball comes out now, kick forward for the Pies. Alomes has got it. Good tap there, smart play there from Alomes. Gives it off to Mitchell, the skipper. Everyone's around here if you're an Orkey player and it's going to be holding the ball. A little bit of pressure there from Glenorchy. Perry King is going to be the recipient of this free kick. Not a great kick off the boot from Perry King. It's gone out of bounds. I think that might have just bounced inside the line, says the umpire. So it might be. Yeah, so obviously with TSL rules, uh, last obviously last touch uh, kick out, so no throw-ins. It's just a straight kick out, so it's going to be a Clarence play. Clarence kick now, sorry. Darlow's got the footy. She stops and props. It's a kick away now. Mitchell's there for the ruse. Whistle's been blown though. I think it might have been called a hold from the umpire. So forward's got it for the Magpies. So we're just kicking into the seven minute mark of this third quarter. She kicks forward. Can't take the mark though. Sorry, that was Alice Raspin with that kick looking for forward. So she was one of the inclusions today. So Sullivan's got it now. A bit of run there from Sullivan. Kick inside 50, looking for Molly Mitchell. Sorry, Madison Shaw is the player with that football. So ball comes back out now for the Ruse. But it's bounced over, sorry, under the feet of the Clarence defender. This was blown, though. I think it's going to be a free kick it is. So... Really good tackle there from Scott. Uh, Clarence, this feels like they're kind of defending doggedly at the moment. It's been up uh, Glenorchy's end of the ground a lot, but I think a lot of their players, especially Garlo, just playing a really good sweeping role to stop the ball, uh, getting deep in Clarence's attack. But Sullivan was able to cut the ball off, and it's Glenorchy launching forward once again. And it looks like they might be out here, but the kick, it's uh, kind of inadvertently smothered. Mitchell has it, but she's wrapped up in a fierce tackle. And it looks like uh, the umpire is going to bowl the ball up once again. Great tackle there from Rachel Archer. She's been a mainstay in that Clarence defence for a few years now. Obviously played in that premiership win last year, did Rachel Archer. So she's got the footy now. A bit of pressure there, though, from the Pies. Great tackle pressure here. Holding the ball, says the umpire. Skinner's got it. She immediately plays on, does Sarah Skinner. She drives inside 50. I think it might have been brought back it has mm. so no advantage there for Sarah Skinner so she's going to get another kick here just outside 50 so definitely out of her range on goal so she'll look to spot up a teammate inside 50 Sarah Skinner she's an absolute star as we said she trained with uh, the Gnorky men and we see the fruits of that paying off as that's a terrific kick to Zoe Crawford so Zoe Crawford's a talented footballer and she's going to have her first shot on goal for the day I think even in the wet conditions, uh, Glenorchy's tools in Sullivan and Crawford just been really prevalent, uh, getting down back to cut it off or going forward as Crawford so. goes in to go, and this could be the first chance for the Pies to lead all day. Has a ping, and was it touched on the line? In fact, it's actually stayed inside, so Clarence are gonna, able to rebound the ball without even conceding a, a score, so it's some very handy work on the goal line there. Great, great bit of play there from the Ruse on the defensive goal line. So the ball comes back out now. I think it's a mark taken there. It is through number 10 in Rebecca Clifton. So we're going to get another inside 50 here for the Pies. She goes off to Perry King. Perry King drives inside 50, but it's all Clarence there. It's gone straight down the throat of number 7 in Jacinta Limbrick. So she's going to have her kick now to bring this one outside 50. I think it's bounced out of bounds. So smart bit of play there from the Lenorki midfielders there. I think Crawford might be the lady that's going to take this footy she is. So as we said, just had a shot on goal and it just just didn't hit the goal line. So it was a good bit of play there. From Crawford brings it inside and Molly Mitchell's taken a terrific grab. She immediately plays on. What a great decision there from Mitchell has gone down the throat in the Carl Bresnahan. So been shifted into the defensive 50 now, has Bresnahan for the Rue. She played the majority of that first quarter in the middle. So Sutcliffe's there for the Pies. She kicks inside 50, another one for Glenorchy. Players go up, no one takes a mark though. Bresnahan's there, Barwick sets upon her. Good bit of play, massive hit there. No free kick. 
Probably a bit stiff there, Sarah Skinner, not to get a free kick for front on contact. So, Gallo was the lady with the front on contact on Skinner, but play on says the umpire. Barwick goes up unopposed. Quick handball out to Zoe Crawford. Ball goes to the goal square. No one can take a mark. Holly Ryan's there. So is number 31 for the Pi for the Rue, sorry, and Charlotte Kenny. I think that ball has gone out of bounds. It's going to be a free kick, sorry, to Kenny. As forwards just told to come back off the marker touch. So Kenny brings this one up the line. Great attempt there from Sarah Skinner. We know how good of a player she is. She gets her own footy there, Sarah Skinner. Drives back inside 50, but Garlow's there as Hamish said. She's played the mop-up role throughout this contest. Sutcliffe's there. Great tackle, though, by Grace Mitchell, the skipper. That's exactly what you want to see from your skipper in a do-or-die clash, and Grace Mitchell's going to be a free kick here for holding the ball against Mackie Sutcliffe. And if you're a Clarence fan, you hope that can kind of change the tone a bit because it's been at Glenorchy's end all of this game. Uh, another tight contest on the win as we see the ball going around. I think there's going to be another ball up and it's quite late in the term with no scores so far. So you, you dare say if one of these teams can pin a late goal, be massive heading into the final quarter. Definitely would be massive for either side if they can get a late goal here. Garlow's got the footy now. She kicks down the line looking for Jessie Williams. It's her first bit of play since she had that knee knock in the second quarter. Jessie Williams runs in the goal off the side of the boot. I don't think it's going to trouble the score. It's not. She didn't get the bounce she wanted, Jessie Williams. So this ball is going to trickle out. It is just in front of Rebecca Clifton. So obviously that knee injury not as bad as we first thought, Hamish, for Jessie Williams. And it looked like she was uh, going to run into an open goal there. Yeah, well, uh, as she said, probably the first time she's touched it since half time. It hasn't been at her end of the ground, but something really positive for Clarence the forward 50 stoppage they first they've had this term we'll see if they can profit but Glenorchy as always they've just been a pack around the ball uh, looks like the Glenorchy player dispossessed tries to get it free but the umpire doesn't pay it ball trickling around again Clarence try and clear it looks like Glen oh, it's right there to Hannah Smith who takes a pin at the goals and it just misses but that's our first uh, score for the court and uh, as they say potentially a uh, Handy behind, just any score in this match uh, could be helpful. It could be indeed. We know how tight this game's been so far. So that brings the Ruse to 2 3 15, holding a two point lead over Gnorky 2 1 13. As the ball's out on the wing now for Gnorky, that Webster's been called holding the ball. So Bresnahan is going to be the recipient of this kick. She brings it forward looking for Procknick. She can't take the mark though. Oates is there for the Ruse. She kicks deep forward. Smith was there for Clarence, but she can't take a mark. Good bit of play here. Suckler's got the footy now. Gives off to number 37 in Clark. But it's gone straight down the throat of Borrington. So she's going to drive this to the far side. Not a great kick, but Nicole Bray's hand's good enough to recover. She does. She brings this one inside 50. Good bit of play there, though, from Sullivan. Might have been taken high there. So a bit of a knock on the... Maybe, Maybe something in the, in the eye, eye. Yeah. yeah, especially with the wet conditions. But she's been great all day. It's that kind of told down in the line in the fence, so cut the ball off several times. She gives off to Haynes. Haynes drives forward. As we're 14 and a half minutes gone. 14 and a half minutes gone now. So not long to go in this third quarter at all. Two-point ball game in this TSLW semi-final clash. We're in for a ripper of a last quarter. Gemma Webster just plays a bit of a. Uh, Ring around the Rosie with herself. She gets that footy. She drives forward. Ball's going to trickle out of bounds, I think. Stays in. Good bit of play there from number 22 for the Pies in Barwick to keep that footy in, but it's gone out. So it's going to be a boundary throw in here as we approach the siren for the end of the third quarter. I think the siren might beat the Magpies here. So the Pies going to throw this ball in. So ball comes in now. There it is, the siren. So as we said, the siren just beat the Magpies and it's a two-point ball game here in this TSLW semi-final clash. Wherever you're watching, either at the ground or on the live stream via Facebook or YouTube, you're in for a cracker of a last quarter as it's Clarence holding a two-point lead, 2-3-15 to Glenorchy, 2-1-13. Hamish Spence. Uh, well, there was only one point uh, scored that quarter uh, minor behind to uh, Clarence, but I don't really think it reflects how the majority of the quarter was played. It seemed to live up uh, near Glenorchy's uh, fought end of the ground, kind of like what we saw from Clarence at the in the first quarter, but credit to Clarence's defence. I thought especially 
Garlo. Uh, they put Brennanson uh, back there, uh, kind of naturally wherever the ball is you want her to be there. Just were able to defend really doggedly. Uh, a lot of hurried balls inside forward 50, and they created a lot of great pressure. So both sides here looking to book themselves a spot against Launceston in next week's TSLW Grand Final. For one side, it could be the joy of a premiership next week. For the other, it could be season over at the end of this game. Stay with us here on the TSLW live stream. We'll be back with you for the last quarter in just a minute. Hello and welcome back to the final quarter of this do or die TSLW semi-final clash between Clarence and Glenorchy at Abbotsfield Park. There's no doubt about it, we're in for a tight, contested and hot last quarter here at Abbotsfield Park with Clarence holding the 
two-point lead over Gnorky at this point in the contest, 2-3-15 to 2-1-13. My name is Ryan Rosadale, joined by Hamish Spence and Hamish. We only saw the uh, solitary behind in that quarter, but as I just spoke about, there's no doubt in this game, both teams in this last quarter, sorry, both teams will be throwing everything they've got at this contest to book a spot in next week's grand final against Launceston. Yeah, definitely. It's a result kind of impossible to call at the moment, even when uh, either side has had ascendancy in the game. It hasn't always necessarily translated to goals, so... Uh, we know Clarence from last year, they know how to win a tight final course having that miraculous premiership last year. So be interesting if that can come to the fore with the likes of Bresnahan in there. Of course, a very highly decorated playoff. Glenorchy can kind of continue their form from the end of the third quarter. So we're away in the final quarter of this contest. Both sides looking to get the first major on the board and apply scoreboard pressure on the other. This ball goes forward now for Glenorchy. Good tackle there by Webster on Bresnahan. She might have caught one high in that proceeding. She's a bit wary to get up, is Nicole Bresnan. She's a tough operator, though. She's back on her feet. So Crawford goes up against Alomes now. Good tap there by Zoe Crawford. She wins that one down. Good recovery, too, on the deck. Comes out now to Clark. She can't take the footy, though. She's there again. Good work by Clark. Might have been a high tackle, it is. So free kick now to the Ruse. So Bresnahan's free here. I think that's who she's going to look for. It is. Good mark there from Nicole Bresnahan. It looked like she might have been off there, but she's a smart footballer. She disguised that one well. So she brings the footy back inside now. She's got a free player there in at number 22 in Alomes. So the ball comes back out now through Sutcliffe for the Pies. It's a huge kick off the boot from Sutcliffe. It trickles forward. Barwick's there. She kicked one in the first. She gives off to number 14, Mitchell. Kicked another one in the second in Mitchell. She gives to forward. Four kick towards goal, it's good. The Pies get the first of the fourth quarter and it's a Glenorchy lead for the first time in this contest. Well, it's certainly set up beautifully and uh, probably as we kind of alluded to early, maybe a bit of uh, reward for effort for Glenorchy because at least for that third quarter, they were the team on top. It was locked inside their forward 50, but the difference there was uh, probably uh, just getting the ball in there quickly. A lot of credit to Maggie Suckley for that booming yep. kick of... Uh, Sent a half back and just some fast ball movement in the end uh, resulted in a goal. Yeah, Nicole Bresenhan tried to do everything right for her side with, with the switch into the middle of the ground uh, to Alloons, but the ball just went over her head. And as we said, the ball just stayed on the ground with that wet, wet weather underfoot. So huge kick there by Sutcliffe and it resulted in a goal up the other end for forward. So Skinner now brings the ball out. Might have been leg there, but it's play on, says the umpire. Kick forward, another huge kick in for the bank pies. I think it might be a free kick now to the Ruse. It is. I think it might be 52 for a bit of uh, lip to the umpire afterwards from Barwick. So it's going to be a free kick uh, now to uh, Archer. Uh, I think it might be 100 now it is. So that is incredibly costly if you're a Glenorchy supporter. Girls know they should steer clear of that protected area when the, the uh, player's running towards the 50 metre penalty. So it's going to be a free kick here and there's no doubt about it. Rachel Archer will put this through the middle and give Glenorchy the lead again. As she comes in now, she almost, almost, I say, troubled the goal umpire, but she's put that one through just. So incredibly costly there for the Magpies and Elise Barwick as, Glenor as Clarence take the lead again in this game and it's 3-3-21 to 3-1-19. I uh, will give her the benefit there, like an archer. She didn't quite split the middle, but the end result is all that matters. And uh, we've seen it a lot in the AFL finals. Of course, it was talked a lot about with Richmond last yep. week, but you can't give away 100-metre penalties in any game, but especially a big final. They just hit the lead for the first time all day, so talk about a momentum swinger yeah, right there. You're spot on, Hamish. She took the words out of my mouth. that takes all the momentum back into the favour of Clarence after Glenorchy did a lot of hard work in that third quarter and got an early goal. But it's all Clarence now on the scoreboard. They lead by two points, so there's no doubt the Pies are still in this game. As Sutcliffe's got it now. She's been good in this second half as Mackie Sutcliffe off the half-back flank. Kick forward now. Forward's there. Good tackle there for forward. Mitchell, another good tackle. They've had good forward pressure all day, have the Pies. As Sutcliffe's there. Sorry, King. Perry King, that was. She kicks forward. Mitchell's got it now. So distance is a problem here for Mitchell, but I think she's going to drive this one deep inside 50 for the Pies. Exactly what she does, but it's a good smother off the, off the mark from number 27 in Louisa Marmion. 
So kick inside 50 now though for the Pies. Player flies at the front in Clark. She can't take the mark. Skinner's on the bottom of that pack as she has been all game. So ball up now inside 50 for the Pies. Crawford elects to ruck here. So she split her time in the ruck in, in the middle as a usual midfielder. She gets only out of the directly out of the ruck though, unopposed. She kicks off, ball goes to Ryan. I think she might have just dropped that footy. So it's going to be a free kick. As we know, you can't just drop the ball. You've got to legally dispose of the ball. And I think it might be a blood rule here on Charlotte Kenny. So she can't take her kick after the good tackle she applied. So free kick here to the Roos Hamish. And the Pies, for all their hard work down forward, it's going to come straight back out. Yeah, probably the Roos got a bit lucky there, allowing uh, Mitchell to go unopposed in the ruck. She had a snap at the goal and with a play of her class. You can't usually allow that. But it will be interesting to see what they do here because they have had some issues getting the ball outside of their uh, defensive 50 in the second half. So uh, we'll just see what they're able to do here. So and it's smoth smothered on the bark and it looks like it's going to go out. That's the second time it's happened this quarter. The first time it actually went Clarence's way. So a lot of good pressure from both sides. Good bit of play there from the Magpies. They've uh, locked this ball inside 50 now. They trail this game by two points in this do or die TSLW semi-final clash. The winner will advance next week's grand final against Launceston. As the Roos win that ruck tap. Perry King's there for the Magpies. So Zoe Crawford She's on the bottom of this pack. She's got the footy now. We'll have to make an attempt here. She makes a good attempt, so the umpire's going to throw this ball up. So a lot of the play in this quarter has been in the Magpies' forward 50 arc. So if they can get the ball deep, which is they looks like they're going to do now through Crawford, they might put a go on the board. Smart play there, though, from Propnik. Forward's there, though. Good attack on the footy there from forward. Webb start. Gives it off to Skinner. Can't get boot to ball. Umpire calls play on though. Kick right in front of us here in the commentary position at Abbotsfield Park. Sullivan's there. Mitchell, sorry, Oates is there though for the Ruse. Handball out from Sullivan. Another handball out from Sullivan. Terrific work there from Genevieve Sullivan for the Magpies. All comes out, no to the advantage of Clarence through number six in Pierce. Suckler's got the footy though. As you can see, it's hard to pick that footy up under the wet surface of Abbotsfield Park. Oates is there. She's tackled by two pies. A whistle needs to be blown. It is. So this whistle's just going to halt up proceedings here as it was a lot of uh, ground ball in that passage of play. Sullivan goes up. Good tap there from Sullivan. Barwick's got it now. Gets around a couple. Kicks over her body. Wins it out now. Present hands there. She's got Molly Mitchell for company. Good pressure though from Mitchell. Gets a quick kick away to number 27 in Louisa Marmion. So kick forward now for the Roos. Bresnahan follows up her work down the field, kicks inside 50. Great play though from Mackie Suckler. She's been terrific in this last quarter. Mackie Suckler kicks forward. There's no one there though. Ford comes to the footy now. Good, good pressure here by forward. The coach Dean Webster will be very happy with the four pressure group today. Webster's got it now. She gets a kick away inside the ground. Now it's gone straight to Megan Harper. So kick now for the Roos. Brings it directly up the line. Jessie Williams has got it. She can't take the ball though, cleanly. Comes out though, the Roos are going to work well here. But again, it's a forward line pressure of the Pies. It's been terrific all game. If it can just result in a goal, if you're the Norky supporter, it's going to give you the lead in this game. Ball comes forward now. Good play there from Raspin against Edmund. Kick forward now for the Ruse. Goes inside 50. Looks like it's all pies though. Sullivan as she has done all game. Mopping up in front of Mitchell. She's got support there. Might have been holding. It is. So free kick here to Sullivan. She's been good, Hamish. Yeah, she definitely has. And uh, just uh, seeing Brianna Barwick early, that was good. She, of course, went off in that third quarter. Really brave contest. So great to see she's back out on the ground for this uh, uh, very tight final quarter. Actually, it looks like the ball's going her way now. Crouch a contest isn't able to scoop it up, and it goes Marmin's way. But Glenorchy, once again, uh, it's Sutcliffe who sends it forward. I think that's the third rebound 50 she's had this quarter. She's had uh, a lot of influence in this match so far. Ford contested the ball but couldn't bring it in, and it looks like Archer is going to bring it out. 
tight so contest, and it's a course yet. So Perry King is that lady. Very similar body types, Perry King and Mackie Sutcliffe. So King's been lively too in this last quarter. So she brings the fall forward now for the Magpies. Another inside 50. Mark not taken by Archer. It's come over the back to Barwick. Ball goes forward now. There's a free player there in forward. She kicks around the body forward. It's gone straight through the middle. Pies back in front. Well, she's been all over at this quarter forward. Uh, she's got two goals, so she's the leading goal kicker on the ground, but just in general play. And very fitting for Barwick, who uh, cost them uh, that 100-metre penalty yeah. and the, to have been involved in that play. And once again, Glenorchy are back in front as we approach 10 minutes in this final quarter, so it's about as tight as it can get. It's a massive goal from uh, Tiana Ford, as we spoke about. She was very uh, lively in the first half. She was around the footy, applied a lot of forward pressure, and that's a lot of reward for effort there. And that was a uh, terrific snap around the body from Tiana Ford. So as Hamish just spoke about, she's uh, kicked two goals today, both uh, in the second half. So... Glenorchy now hold a 4-1, 25-3, 21 lead. So four points lead here for, Tiana, for Glenorchy. As we see there, Tiana Ford with two for the game. She's kicked nine this year, so she's been lively up forward for the Pies. As Clarence is going to get a free kick now as we're 10 minutes gone. So that goal could be the difference if Glenorchy can hold steady in the last few stages of this game. So Sutcliffe there, good work there from Sutcliffe. But Mitchell get, gets a handball out to Alome. She kicks forward now. Danger now for Glenorchy. Oates is there, so is Williams. Good pressure there from the forward line of Clarence. Kick forward now. Genevieve Sullivan's there. Mark in front paid to her. She's been outstanding throughout this contest. Played in the ruck and been that sweep out down in defence, getting back in the hole. So she gives off now to one of the other Magpies best in Sutcliffe. Not a great shoe, though, but it's worked out all right. It's gone to Laura Negri, but she's tackled. Garlow's got the footy, though. I think it's going to fade directly out of bounds. It is. So, Garlow, that was the chance they needed, the ruse. And it's just gone begging there as we approach the 11-and-a-half-minute uh, mark. You'd suggest they might need to change their strategy going in because it feels like either, either Sullivan's cutting it off in the air or you have Sutcliffe kind of just cleaning it up. But they might get another chance here as the ball's gone out of bounds so she wouldn't be happy with that Gemma Webster she tried everything there to get that mark and it would have been handy she would have taken a mark and chewed a bit of time off that clock but they hold a four point lead here as we are uh, just three minutes to go in this contest so wherever you're watching you're in for a cracker of time on in this game ball comes out now to number 17 in Borington it's come out now through Raspin she kicks forward I think Play. Sorry, no, no whistle blown there. There was course for ball, but it wasn't called. Mark taken now to number six in Natalie Pierce. So she's going to drive this one forward. It could be the last shot here for the Ruse. Ball comes out the back now. Players on this footy. It's going to be a ball up. And I'd be nervous if I was either coach here in Andrew Smith or Dean Webster. Both sides right with a chance here, but Clarence with the ascendancy in terms of ball inside 50. So ball comes out now, Sullivan, terrific work from Genevieve Sullivan. Handball off to Grace Mitchell. She tries to give to Garlo. She tries to get around one and two. She can't. No whistle blown. Good work there by the umpire, letting the game go. Ball comes out now to number 10 in Rebecca Clifton. She brings forward. It's all Clarence, so Archer's there. Holly Mitchell's there, though. Good handball there by Mitchell. Gives off to a teammate. That might just do it for the Pies if they can get ball in. We see there's no one in the forward 50 here for Glenorchy. Present hands there though. She's mopped up now. She brings into the centre of the ground. Garlow's there. She looked to get this one forward now. Garlow quickly. She takes her on. Works out all right for the Ruse, but the ball didn't travel very far. So ball goes forward now. Hopefully for the Ruse if you're a supporter for Clarence. But it's going to stick in the middle of the ground as we've got a minute and a half to go here in this contest. Might have been a leg there on Nicole Bresnahan. Umpire missed that one though, so it's going to be a ball up. With one minute and 15 seconds to go, it's right down to the wire in this TSLW semi-final clash. Allos gets that one out. Kick forward now for the Ruse. Williams is there. Over the back. Good work, Jesse Williams. Players all around this ball. Williams keeps her feet. She's clean. She goes to ground now, set upon by a number of Glenorchy defenders, and we are deep 
into the final into this game, Hamish. Well, we could be set for a photo finish, and I reckon look out for Williams whenever the ball's been at ground level. She's been so dangerous. We'll see what happens here. So, can Glenorchy hold on in this game, or are Clarence going to pitch a lead here and a win? Good tackle there. Umpire lets the play go. Round ball, this is what you want if you're a Glenorchy player. Just keep this ball locked in. Chew a bit of time off the clock, so we've got 30 seconds to go here in this game. If something's going to happen for Clarence, it's going to happen through this ruck tap. Ball comes out now. Players all over this footy. Barwick's there. Good bit of play there. It's gone to Presnahan, though. Quick kick off by Nicole Presnahan. Oh. Great mark by Mackie Sutcliffe. That's going to do it for the Pies, I think. She'll take all the time she can here. She's been massive in Gee, this final quarter. she's been quarter. good. Mackie Sutcliffe, you are a star. She's been terrific in this last quarter. She kicks out of the back 50 for the Magpies. Ball now. Bresenhan's got the footy. Kick forward. I think that might be it now. That is it. There's the Soren. Glenorchy have won this TSLW semi-final clash by four points over Clarence. They've done what they couldn't do all year. They've beaten the Roos in what was a terrific game of footy, Hamish Spence. Oh, that was a thrilling finish. Uh, three goals kicked in the final quarter, and uh, full credit to Tiana Ford. She got two goals in the uh, last quarter to be the leading goal kicker, but full credit to Clarence. Uh, really the only difference at the end of the day was the scoreboard. It was a very tight game. Uh, the ascendancy went either way, but just Glenorchy up. Uh, were just probably in that second half, the better team able to lock the ball inside their fifth, forward 50 a bit longer. A lot of, uh, you hear a lot of talk in finals about moments, and I think the big moment in that game was obviously that mark there to Mackie Sutcliffe in the dying stages. She doesn't take that mark, that ball might trickle forward to a Clarence player. That was massive from Mackie Sutcliffe. Yeah, 100% agree with you there, and even just other moments here, you could uh, credit them to her. She had two absolutely booming uh, rebounds outside of defensive 50, which actually carried to their forward line. Yeah, she kicked that ball inside 50 that resulted in the... Uh, in the forward goal, so. <laughs> and I also thought it was quite fitting for Elsie Barwick. It looks like she might be the fill-in for Glenorchy in the sense she gave away that 100 metre 50 penalty after they hit the lead for the first time. But in that second uh, Tiana Ford goal, uh, she was involved in that play and in the end that was enough to get the pies over the line. So Clarence unable to go back to where they were last year and, and look to defend their premiership from last year. But as we said, it's been a terrific year from Clarence. I obviously... Finished third on the ladder and just 16% separated these sides. So we knew going into this game how close this contest would be and there's no doubt that if you were watching at the ground or joined us here on the live stream, you were heart in your mouth in the in the dying stage of this clash. Hamish, if you just want to maybe run through some of your better performance for Clarence and I'll take care of the Glenorchy side. Yeah, no worries. So uh, just quickly going through the goals, it was uh, Amy Propotkrick and Natalie Pierce who hit the scoreboard in the first quarter and then you had Rachel Archer, which... Uh, Looked like a goal which might get them the lead, but running through Clarence's players, I think the name who jumps out is Bresna Hand. Yep. She was dominant all day. Wherever the ball was, she was there, especially in the first half. Uh, I thought Garlo in that yep. second half was also really good. Uh, she kind of played that sweeper down back, and especially since the ball was there quite a lot, I thought she was uh, really prevalent there as well. Yeah, I think you're spot on with those two choices, Hamish. Obviously for the Pies, uh, obviously uh, Genevieve Sullivan we thought had a terrific second half. She was uh, played a lot in the ruck in that game with uh, Zoe Crawford, but then when uh, the ruck, when the ball was in the centre of the ground, she'd drift back and she'd sit in the hole, so she was terrific in that last quarter, along with uh, Mackie Sutcliffe was really good. Thought uh, Libby Haynes started the game really well down forward. Sarah Skinner had a lot of the footy, as did Gemma Webster and Zoe Crawford in the middle. Uh, Perry King was good throughout, um, and obviously Tiana Ford kicking the two goals. Obviously that one in the last quarter that got her side over the line. So as we spoke about, Glenorchy with a 4-1-25 to Clarence 3-3-21 win. And Hamish, that sets up a terrific grand final next week between Launceston and Clarence, as we spoke about pre-game. Uh, Lonnie with the two losses this year, and they were both against Glenorchy. So if you're a uh, Launceston player or supporter, there's no doubt you'd be pretty nervous heading into next week. Yeah, it should be a thrilling uh, clash, and we should note that it's very even at the top three on the ladder. All three teams finished with six wins and two losses. That's Glenorchy, Clarence and Launceston, of course, but that's a bit of momentum that Glenorchy will bring in next week. They know that they can beat Launceston, which we know across the past two years has been very hard to do, but of course it will be a Launceston home game, so that's a bit of edge they have. Uh, going in for them next week. So should be a thrilling cra uh, clash between two quality sides. Absolutely spot on there, Hamish. So that'll just about do it from us here at Abbotsfield Park today. But just before I go, I will mention that if you're a uh, 
TSL supporter, you've got two more games coming your way in just about half an hour's time with two TSL semi-final clashes, both from Launceston. The first game will be North Launceston versus Clarence at Utah's Stadium from 2 o'clock. And then you've got Launceston and Lauderdale in the other semi-final at Windsor Park, also at 2 o'clock. So you might have to switch between each game there, but there's no doubt you're in for a cracker of a game, whichever one you choose to watch. Uh, so, yeah, that'll do us here from Abbotsfield Park. Just repeating the scores there, it was a 4-1, 25-3-3, 21 win with Glenorchy advancing through to next week's grand final against Launceston. On behalf of Hamish Spence, I'm Ryan Rosendale. We'll see you next week.